hence to be killed. Inflexibility, when you're not flexible, breeds offense on assignments. So they go and they uh, go to the other assignment, and that's the part I was telling y'all yesterday. Did you find it? Yes. Oh, let's roll with it. I ain't scared. <laughs> You don't expect your family to understand what you're doing. You just hope they'll accept it. I'm so excited for you, man. You're gonna be a good dad. And when you get home, you hope you can pick up right where you left off. Three, two, I didn't hear Apostle Major when he said he watches it all the time. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all that. Let me give you a little bit of history here. Um, they actually had to uh, get real Navy SEALs to come in and do parts of this movie. One of the gentlemen that's in the team is actually a true Navy, Navy SEAL. They literally shot over 6,000 rounds in one of the scenes. Yeah. And they literally told the producers, we don't do anything fake. So it's not like we can shoot rubber bullets, it's not like we can, we're gonna shoot the real deal. And literally, if you do your own homework and you watch how the film was made, you'll find all this out. They're literally shooting rounds. You see where the boat was shooting all those rounds off the boat? There's two boats that are actually doing, firing those rounds, and the filmers, it's going right over their heads wow. as those rounds are going off. Jeez. So the thing to understand is they're trying to give you um, the real deal. But at the end of the day, they can't give you everything because they wouldn't stay the special team that they are. So. Understand that in doing that, we always can't go and tell everybody everything. You can't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Amen. When you get put on an assignment, not everybody needs to know. Facebook don't need to know. Facebook don't need to have pictures. You don't need to tweet. You don't need to Instagram. You just need to stay in that lane. Because when you put information out, that's how sometimes the enemy is able to get in. So we have to understand that. Another part in the in the movie is that when they're all, if you notice, they were around that fire around the beach mm -hmm. and stuff. Well, one of the things that we have to make sure that they do and we've done on, on assignments is 
you have to make sure that everything in the rear, meaning back home, is in order. You need to get that. You need to make sure, and one thing that we did is we had to make sure that everything in hell, as far as medical, if our family needed any medical, was in place. If uh, our bank accounts were straight, we had to make sure that our marriage was straight. We had to make sure that the dog and cat and mouse, hamsters and everything were going to be taken care of. Why? Because one of the biggest things when you're out in the battlefield that can be a major distraction is if your home is not in order. So I encourage you all as intercessors that as you go out on assignment is to make sure, one, that your house is in order, and two, that you have your own intercessors that are covering you specifically. That they're covering your children, that they're covering your house, that they're covering your finances, that they're, they're covering your dog or your cat, whatever animal you have. They're covering your vehicle. That they're spending time before the Lord to protect you. Not so that they can gain out of it, anything out of it, and they will for their obedience, but that they're in protection of you. And it's key. I specifically have a team that specifically covers me no matter what I'm doing. Then I have a team for my wife. I have a team for my children. Mm -hmm. I have a team for the Impact Center, one for the Res America. I set up specific teams that are willing to be on the wall. And they know they're not supposed to get off the wall. They know that if they get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning, hey, it's your watch time, they get up and they spend time in intercession for whatever that assignment is. So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Don't come to SWAT. Don't come to an assignment. Don't go and do anything unless you're being covered. Okay? Somebody's praying for you. Number two is if you're under or aligned with somebody, let them know what you're doing. Because you need that coverage as well. Okay? Don't go out and don't tell your, if you have an apostle over your life or if it's a pastor or um, a prophet or whatever of the fivefold is your covering, then make sure they know. If you don't have one, you need to hurry up and get one. Okay? Don't be out there without coverage from that perspective either. So I know it's a side note of what I'm going to bring. However, I just sense to make sure that you guys are being covered and not out there just doing what you want to do because you become an easy target. You're, you're just very vulnerable out there. We had a lady one time that was with us and aligned with the impact center and she took off to the second highest point of Oklahoma, which is one of the mountains in our city. And she got up to the mountain and she pulled out a shofar and just began to blow that shofar at the highest point. Next thing you know, that lady was almost killed through sickness. Again, she had no coverage. I didn't know. I found out after the map that she had went and did something like that. So it brought an opportunity, again, objects lesson, to teach people from the impact center and train them about going out as Lone Rangers on assignment. Mm -hmm. So I strongly encourage y'all to make sure those two things that you always are being covered. We had one of our officers from SWAT, Texas, both of us this morning about some things that she picked up. So we immediately, we thank her and, you know, we're on alert. Because you just never know. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, you're going to get blindsided. Yeah. And that's why it's always good to have backup. Mm -hmm. Okay? Amen. So, uh, Recruit Rita, I want to thank you for going and changing. I appreciate it because it shows honor and willing to be confronted for change. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you for doing that. See, she could have easily got offended. When correction comes to people, nine times out of ten, the flesh doesn't like it. But again, we are supposed to be crucifying the flesh and picking up our cross. And it's key. It's key for us to stay flexible and not get easily offended. Crucify the flesh. Bring it under subjection. Tell it what to do. Don't let it tell you what to do. Don't let your soul tell you what to do. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your spirit, man, the more that you build your spirit, man, up, the more that your soul and your flesh will be under subjection. No word, no fasting, no prayer gives you a weak spirit. That's the only way you're going to be able to build your spirit man up. So understand, in spiritual warfare, your spirit man has to be ruling and reigning. Not your flesh and not your soul. Okay? So these are key things that, again, just the Lord is having me bring up because I sense that it's important for us to understand that in this battle, in this spiritual warfare, you have to continuously be armed up. You can't, look, you can't even walk the streets in a normal day and think that the enemy is not watching for an opportunity to come in. When you choose to surrender your will to the purposes and plans of God, you're on the radar. You're on the radar. How big, how big of a target you are, that's on how big are you willing to do what God wants you to do. When you begin to gain ground, the enemy's forces get stronger against you. And now look, you might be solid, you might be strong, and you, and they're not touching you, but they might touch a family member. They may touch your finances. They may touch your vehicle. They'll find a way to try to get you out of that position of your surrendering to God's will. And if he can get you to just open the door to start to come out, he's got you. He's got, if, I say this, if he lives, if Christ, the Holy Ghost, lives in you, and someone knocks on the door, you don't have to answer. Amen. You don't even have to look into people, because Christ is already inside. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? He says, I knock, but once you let him in, shut the door. <laughs> right? Right. Like Miss Nancy told us, hey, shut y'all's room door so you can keep the AC in the room. Guess what? I make sure that door is always closed because I like it cold. See what I'm saying? So if, if the Holy Ghost resides on the inside, you don't have to open the door to any attacks of the enemy. And you'll recognize it. We have a gift. And it's called discernment. Yes. Use it. Don't let it just sit there and get dust. Use it. Ask the Holy Spirit, hey, what, what am I sensing here? You're my guide. You're my teacher. Show me. Do your job. That's what the Holy Ghost is there for. But if we don't activate it, it ain't his fault. He gave it to us. Right? So it, it's key for y'all to understand that you're on the radar. And you're going higher on the enemy's radar because of what you're doing now. Right. You're becoming one. Mm -hmm. He'd rather y'all be doing your own thing. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Versus saying, you know what? I'm going to lay this down and do this because I know that in the long run, it's going to benefit this. See, some of y'all could have just, well, you know, i got other things to do and I got this prayer thing going here. I got this going here. I got my kid. Listen, I got a daughter right now that is carrying a baby that's over 10 pounds. And they're trying to 
make or hold it till the July 25th. It doesn't even, the baby is so big, it doesn't even register anymore. Her last son was 11 pounds, 6 ounces. Wow. Natural. Wow. Yeah, see, y'all women and y'all hurting. <laughs> and she's refusing to get a C-section. Bless her. Okay? Bless her. So at any point in time, I can get a phone call and, hey, your grandbaby's coming. Guess what? I'm under assignment. Amen. Been there, done that. And that's the real deal. That's right. That's the real deal. My first son was born, and I was stationed in Korea, and they didn't let me go. And I, I did everything that I was supposed to do that they've asked me to do to go see my first son born. And the army said no. Did I like it? No. But it is what it is. We go on. We adapt and overcome. If she happens, and that's why sometimes y'all see me walk out, and it, nine times out of ten is my grandson <laughs> calling me. So I don't know if it's her or him, so I finally told him, look, don't let him call me no more because I don't know which one it is. So, But we got to understand those things come up. But if God's put you on an assignment, he's going to cover that. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. He's yeah. going to take care of that. That's it. Yeah. That's it right there. That's if you're right. being obedient to do what he called you to do. That's right. it. Mm -hmm. But we just, we have this preconceived, no, i got to be there. Uh -huh. Well, is that what God told you? That's right. And did you make a commitment to this other part? Because your word, remember I told you integrity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you say, I'm going to be there, yeah. guess what? Be there. Be there. So we've got to understand there's different things that the enemy will use to stop you from fulfilling your assignment. Okay? So be sensitive. Be discerning. It's a gift. Amen? Amen. All right. So keep me on track. Where's my sign holder? Who's holding my 10, 15, 10? There you go. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You didn't go A walk, did you? A wall from where? When your baby was coming. Did you? Did you? Oh no. Did you try to run out, leave, run off? No, I got. Oh, you stayed the course. I stayed the course. Thank I spent you. a whole year away from my family. Oh wow. wow. Okay. Oh. My wife was in Oklahoma, and I was in South Korea, young son, mm. for a year. Mm. That's how we started our marriage. Oh. Mm. <coughs> okay. Oh, wow. So you can understand. Sure. And let me tell you, that separation did affect my relationship with my son. Mm -hmm. But over the course and over seeking God out, that relationship is totally healed. Praise God. Okay? Because again, it's we talked about it the first night that we were here. When the father's away from the child, mm -hmm. what happens? Mm -hmm. They long for that connection. So, I did not leave. Did I get mad? Oh, I got mad. I, I, that was BC, before Christ. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know. Okay? But guess what? I didn't leave. Oh, bless you. Because I knew my assignment was to fight for my country. That's right. And as I fought for my country, my son would be taken care of. That makes sense to y'all? Yes. I know to the normal people, and you guys ain't normal. The Bible says y'all peculiar anyway, so we don't do that. We're not normal. Intercessors ain't normal. I'm trying to tell y'all. That's right. Carrying a bag with all those funny looking flags. Funny looking horn thing. Come on, Pastor. You can help the brother out. Testify. Look, we see intercessors rolling with us that their bags look like that, don't it? Look, by that drum. Yeah. And they got 15 drums in their bags. So, you know, all kind of oils. Crisco, olive, you know. Not y'all, right? Look, you notice none of them said nothing. I got it. I can read it. But again, when you're on assignment, stay on assignment. You can't just up and leave just because something happens back home. What you should do is ask 
the father, what did I do for that door to be open? Mm. See, we always want to be like Adam and Eve, blame somebody else. But what if Eve would have said, I did it. I disobeyed my husband. What if Adam, instead of saying, he blamed God. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah, I don't know how many yeah. people catch that. Yeah. You can't yeah. He blamed God <laughs> because he gave him a mate. <laughs> instead of just saying, hey dad, I repent. Where would we have been if he would have just took the bull by the horn and said, Dad, I didn't stop her. I didn't correct her. I went ahead and, and took a bite. See, if we would just stop and stop trying to blame everybody else, and when things don't go right, evaluate yourself. Doesn't the Bible, somewhere in the Bible, say, <laughs> judge yourself? Yeah. How many of us, honestly and truly, if you were being 100, you judge yourself first mm -hmm. before you go and start blaming somebody else? Mm -hmm. Well, they should have picked a better time to do it. Well, they should have did this or you know, this or that. Stop. Just stop. Pump your brakes. God, what did I do? How can I shift this? Train me. Teach me. Because it is what God wants. Is for his sons and daughters to come to him and seek his counsel. How many of you that have children prefer that they come to seek you for wise counsel over somebody else? Mm -hmm. When they were kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you go ask them? Why don't you come and just ask me? Mm -hmm. Even now, I have 30 and 31 year old and a 27 year old. They're, if they go and Matter of fact, okay, I'm going to be 100. My oldest son, his car broke down. He went to somebody else. And I, but guess who he came to for the money? <laughs> and I was like, I didn't know your car broke down. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's going to take, I'm like, but I didn't know your car broke down. He finally looked at me and he goes, I should have came to you first, right? I said, yeah, because now you want me to pay a bill that I could have actually got it less. Mm. if you just would have called me. Mm. And we could have did some, some different stuff. And he goes, I'm still in the learning process. 31 years old, still in the learning process. Yes. But see, that's the thing. If we expect that of our children, how much more does God expect it of us? That's right. mm -hmm. And that's why my favorite scripture in all 66 books that I believe this one verse ties into all 66 books of the Bible. And that's Matthew 6, 33. <laughs> to seek him first. Yes, Lord. Uh, no matter what happens, no matter what you do, when you wake up in the morning, do you seek him first? <laughs> and then wait. And listen. And follow the intel he gives you. I mean, he's only asking for two things, for us to get everything. He says everything else will be added. And he just wants two things. And we can't do that. What if our children did that to us? We get upset about it, don't we? There's something called the revelation of leather. It's called a belt. When they don't listen to us, right? What you say? Come on. Amen. I know y'all don't do it now, but, you know, back in my day. Come on, I'm talking to some classic people in here. Amen. There's some not even to the classic state yet. Pre-classic. But being classic, you remember, that leather brought serious revelation. It brought that something about... Confronting that leather when it confronted your behind, uh -huh. it brought some change to yes, you. Yes. Did it not? Yes. It taught you how to dance. Yes. Right? It taught some of us how to run. Uh -huh. Right? 
Come on. It taught us how to play hide and seek. Was I the only one that hid the belt? Okay. But if we did that and we were able to accept that and we lived, how much more if God corrects us are we going to live even better? Because we trust him. Because we allow him to be the Lord over our lives. See, I, I believe they have it backwards when they come to salvation. They say, come and accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. No. He saved you first. And right. then after the cross is making him Lord. Lord. See? So they should say, come and accept Jesus as your Savior and make him Lord over your life. Right? So we have to understand that as intercessors, it's about seeking him first. It's about getting the intel. And then everything else, which y'all looking for. How many of y'all do want revival to break out in Florida? Oh, yeah. Earnestly. Yeah. Yes. Well, guess what? As much as you want it, God wants it more. Yeah. Right? How many times do you hear people say, oh, I want more? Anybody ever said yes. that or heard yes. that? Yes. I tell people, yeah, God wants more too. Amen. He wants more of us. Yes. He wants us to die to the self. Because there's change. And I'm going to give you five hindrances to change. Number one is pride. Whoa. Oh, that struck right there, dude. <laughs> Let me tell you, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18, it says this, A man may think that he is great. He will really destroy himself in the end. A man may think that he is better than everyone else. A man like that will soon fall. And I read it out of the easy translation because I want to make it easy. So pride says, I don't need to change. There's nothing wrong with me. You are the one who needs to change. That's what pride will say. So we have to be careful when we say, I don't need to change. Because at the end of the day, we all need change. So if we all need change, we all need conflict to learn how to change. We all need conflict so we can see how we need to change. It's part of training. It's part of dying to yourself. One thing I told pastor, uh, the pastors, um, I said to them in the, in the car coming here this morning, you can't beat experience. You can't beat experience. Why? Because people have gone before us and they have fought the good fight of faith. And they've learned some things and they've gained some knowledge. So when someone comes and they tell you Guess what? Evaluate and see how you can apply it. It might be from a different flavor. And that's okay. Because I'm not going to do it like y'all and y'all not going to do it like me. But as long as we're doing it. The Bible says to be doers of the word. Yes. Do it in your flavor. But at least do something. But when we say that we can't change and someone with experience is telling you Look, that's not going to work. Take it to the Holy Spirit and ask Him. Holy Spirit, Apostle Nigel told me to go ahead and close my school. Or go ahead and close down from having service. I don't understand that. It ain't fair that He can keep having church and I have to close mine. And the Lord said, follow what He said. And I did. And then the blessings started raining in. I didn't agree with him. Look, I'm telling y'all publicly, it's recorded. <laughs> but I sought wise counsel from covering. Mm -hmm. And he's got experience. Mm -hmm. And when he told me to close, <coughs> I didn't bless you. I didn't tell him over the phone, look, you're wrong. 
You missed it. You're not hearing the Holy Ghost. Did I say that to you? I said, okay. Hung up, and I'm sitting in my truck in front of the impact center, bawling my eyes out because my apostle didn't catch what I was trying to tell him. Mm. Next you know, we got a major blessing. <laughs> and I shared it with some of y'all. Got a building, 22,000 square feet. 2.7 acres of land for $10,005. That don't happen to normal people. But it does happen to obedient people. And he can tell you the blessings have been raining in since then. <coughs> Simply because I was willing to die to my flesh and come into alignment and do what he told me to do. I didn't let pride get in the way. I was willing to change. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. The second hindrance to change is fear. Yeah. Fear. Let me tell you what fear is. If you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 out of the Passion, it says, love never brings fear. For fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. Fear says, I'm afraid to change. I am afraid to take a risk. I will live in the average rather than stepping into something new. Come on. Yes. Yes. I will live in the average. I don't serve an average God. Amen. That's right. Rather than stepping into something new. I believe it was Pastor Wesley that talked about a wineskin. Yes. This is a new wineskin. And there's going to be a lot of people that have swam in the old wineskin that don't want to step into the new. And guess what? We still got to love them. Yes. But don't mean we got to stay in the old. Right. Okay? My wife used to sing Southern gospel music. And there's nothing wrong with Southern gospel music. But praise the Lord that she doesn't sing Southern gospel music anymore. <laughs> okay? Just a different flavor, different times. But we understand the foundation of it all, right? So it's, again, being willing to make the changes and not operate in fear. And then, I, then I have to, to be fearful to change leads to confusion. When you're fearful, it leads to confusion. Because then you're like, well, I don't know which way to go, you know, because now you heard the Lord and you're like, oh, I don't know if that's God. It was the same voice you heard yesterday. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's the Lord, sister. Let me go back to praying. Wait a minute. That doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what it breeds is confusion. Because mm -hmm. then now you're second guessing. Now your flesh is stepping in and you're having your, all your thoughts and now all of a sudden your emotion kick in. Your feelings. Listen. Cancel all fear. Amen? Amen. Number three, rebellion. There's another hindrance to change. Okay? And in 1 Samuel chapter 13, well, 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, You sin if you refuse to obey the Lord. This sin is as bad as to do evil magic. You think that you know better than God. Oh, man. That is a sin which is like the worship of idols. You refuse to obey what the Lord said. Now. The Lord has refused you as king. And y'all know the story of Saul. We've got to understand, are we resisting change? What's rebellion? Rebellion says, I will not change. Too rebellious to change leads to destruction. And the perfect example was Saul, who had a rebellious heart. 
He even told Samuel, when Samuel confronted him about the Amalekites, he said, your God. Yes. It was no longer his God. Right. And it was wow. that God that put him in place. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand, check our hearts. Keep your heart right. Ask God to go into the innermost parts of your heart. He knows your heart. Mm -hmm. He knows your heart more than you know your heart. Is there rebellion breeding in your heart? Are you resisting change because it's not your way? Are you resisting change because it's not the way you want it to look? That's rebellion. So you have to be mindful that again, it will breed a separation from God. <clears throat> because of him willingly being rebellious, he lost everything. Are you willing to pay that price because you don't want to change? That you lose everything? I know it's a question. However, I know the answer. You don't want to lose everything. You want to be able to continue to do what God's called you to do. But you don't want to do it without God. Amen? Amen. Number four, laziness. Mm -hmm. Laziness. Proverbs 14, 23. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. You can talk about everything, but if you're not doing anything, that's all it is. We've got to have our hands to the plow. You call yourselves an intercessor? Are you really interceding? Are you getting up two, three in the morning? Are you spending time in the word? Are you spending time in fasting? Are you seeking other intercessors that are of like mind and willing to sacrifice? See, I believe that's, that's what this is all about with Pastor Arabella and Pastor Wesley. They don't want to, they can do it all by themselves, but they choose not to do it by themselves. And that's why they, they're making a call. They're sounding the alarm. Hey, Florida intercessors, let's get together. But guess what? They can't do it by themselves. They can't do it by themselves. Y'all got to go out there. Y'all got to recruit. See, we could sit, Apostle Nidra and I, and wait for others to recruit people for SWAP. But we know we got to get out there. And we got to cast a vision. And we got to encourage people. And we got to uplift people. And tell them what SWAT is all about. But if we don't do it, then who will? Where there's no vision, what? If y'all not casting the vision of intercession as one, guess what? It's people going to perish. Y'all catch the reverb, reverberation of revival breaking out in another state and then y'all catch it versus being the ones that have it and everybody else catches it. Mm -hmm. You can't get mad then if Oklahoma breaks out a revival and y'all haven't broke out. Right. Y'all might as well, okay God, what did we miss? But Lord, we missed it, we repent, and we're jumping in. Yeah. Yeah. He's not get upset. It's no use. My wife told me something that has stuck with me for 33 years. When she first said it, Pastor, ooh, boy, I didn't like it. <laughs> mm. She would say, baby, you can't cry over spilled milk. <laughs> if they wouldn't have got the milk, they wouldn't have spilled it in the first place. <laughs> but it's reality. If it's already happening, okay, just join it. Let's roll with it, right? It's the same thing. So we've got to understand we can't be lazy because God will find somebody else. Look, I'm, I'm, some bubbles are going to pop here. You weren't God's first choice.
I hope and pray that you're his last one because you're going to do what he's called you to do no matter what. But if you're not, guess what? He's got another generation coming up right behind you. So that's what I've told God for my city. I literally said, God, you've had five apostles here and they haven't done what they were supposed to do. You don't have to look nowhere else. I'm the last one. And I've said, and my daughter doesn't like this, but I say it anyway. If I'm not going to do what you've called me to do, then I'm ready to go to heaven. Mm. I don't want to waste time. I don't want to take up no time. I don't want to take up the time of the other, the other one that's coming up. I'm good. Don't let me be the cause of others slipping. And guess what? I've said that for the last eight years and I'm still here. Because I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Whether it doesn't seem right to me or not. Whether my wife agrees with it or not. Come on, somebody, help me. Because sometimes we want to please everybody else and leave God out. And I've told my wife, baby, I love you, but you don't come before God. What he tells me to do, I'm going to do. I pray that you come up and we're hooked up and we're doing it together. But at the end of the day, it's like coming here. Even he asked me, where's Rochelle? He calls her Rochelle. Her name's Rochelle, but he calls her Rochelle. Mm -hmm. Okongi Mom, which literally that's her Indian name, which means black girl. Mm -hmm. He asked, is she not coming with you? Even Pastor Arabella texted me, is your wife not coming with you? No, I don't know how many people have asked me, she's not with you? Because we're always together, we do ministry together. But she knew she wanted to stay home with my daughter. Gotcha. And I was going to come and do this. We understood that. So again, sometimes you're going to have to make sacrifice for the greater good. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Number five. 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 What is it? What I call it? Oh. Five excuses. Oh, hindrances. <laughs> Five hindrances to change. Number five, ignorance. Ignorance, believe it or not, ignorance. James chapter one, verse five says, but maybe you need to know how to be wise. Then ask God to help you. He is ready to give everyone what they need. And he never says that it is wrong to ask. So, God will help you to be what? Thank you. But if you don't ask, it's not his fault. You have not because and you got to ask how? Believing. Believing. So what's the other word? How does the, how does the Bible put it? Ask by come on God. It's the only thing that pleases God. Don't ask him and be double-minded about it. Okay? Don't be ignorant. And we can't be ignorant to the enemy's devices. Because he is plotting. He's plotted against this gathering and this training from the time that God put it as a vision and a mission in the weaver's heart. And as soon as they spoke it, he assigned enemies to it. He assigned demons to destroy it, to distract them, to cause them to doubt, to cause them to fear, to cause people to fear. But yet, we're still here today. The enemy's out, I'm telling you. He is out to stop the movements of God. But those that are the remnant that are willing to press forward, the move of God will manifest. So don't be ignorant. Ignorance says, I don't know how to change. Ignorance towards change will lead you nowhere. Ignorance towards change will lead to nowhere. Change is inevitable. Whoever, whomever God called, 
He brought seasons of change. Y'all better write that down. Whomever God called, he brought seasons of change. Because I don't know about you, when I drive somewhere, things change as I'm moving forward, right? The scenery changes, the road changes, the atmosphere changes, the climate changes. So we've got to understand, if we say God is a forward-moving God, then there are seasons of change. So if you prepare yourself, come on, if you stay flexible, that's how you prepare yourself to the movements of God, there'll always be change and you'll be able to roll with it. Because at the end of the day, when God changes something, he's already empowered you to walk through that change. Let me give you the scripture so you can know that I'm, I'm preaching the word or teaching the word. God will not allow more on you than you can handle. It's been quoted wrong and people say God won't put more on you than you can handle. Listen, my daddy will not put cancer on me to see if I can handle it. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay? He won't allow more on you than you can handle. So that means when change comes, he already knows that you're going to make it. So don't freak out. Don't panic. Don't get in yourself and say, okay, God, I didn't see this change coming. You did. What do you want me to do with it? Remember, there's five hindrances, and I'm going to wrap it up. Five hindrances to change. Pride, fear, rebellion, laziness, and ignorance. Don't be and don't open the door to one of these. Stay movable. Stay flexible. Be ready for change. Whenever God shifts, you should be so close to God that you bump right into him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's it for me. Thank you, Lord.